from that run. Me too, Kayleen. We ran all the way from the parking lot to the studio. Can you imagine running a marathon? Oh, marathons. I've never ran one of those, but I've heard they're super long. Yeah. Where do we even get the idea for a marathon anyway? That's a great question, Kayleen. Allow me to explain. Around 480 BC, a long time ago in Greece, a man ran 25 miles from Marathon to the city of Athens in order to relay an important message that the Greeks had won victory over the Persian forces. Exhausted and trembling from the long journey, the man made the announcement and then he collapsed, dead. In order to honor him, people invented the marathon race. Wow, I don't know if I should be inspired or horrified. But, you know, the human race never ceases to amaze me. What do you say, Michelle? The marathon certainly pushes the human body to its limits. Did you know that during this race, people can lose 5 to 10 pounds, and they can even shrink in their height a few centimeters? In addition, some people actually experience short-term kidney failure, and they may even be at risk for hypothermia. Wow, that is really interesting. It doesn't seem very healthy in the long run. You get what I mean. But all of that aside, all of this talk about marathons actually reminds me of this really cool animal called the globe skimmer dragonfly. What's the globe skimmer dragonfly? Allow me to explain. Thank you. The globe skimmer dragonfly is believed to have the longest non-stop migration of any animal relative to its body size. Biologists hypothesize that they migrate from India all the way to East Africa, and individual dragonflies travel over 3,730 miles in their lifetime. That's about 143 marathons. And they do all of this while only weighing about 300 milligrams and measuring less than two inches in length and three inches wide. Wow, that is incredible. How does the little bugger do it? Well, Michelle, the dragonfly actually doesn't exert itself the whole time. It alternates between flying, which requires a lot of energy, and gliding, which requires little to no energy. It takes advantage of those wind patterns to efficiently use their precious energy on its migratory route. That is so cool. It's amazing how God has created these dragonflies so perfectly. They are designed to be able to read and to ride the wind while also having the body to endure such a long journey. Well said, Michelle. It actually reminds me of a passage in the Bible, Matthew 6, 25 to 26, which reads, For this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, that they do not sow, nor reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? God's word clearly reminds us not to be anxious because God provides for his creation. We see that God provides the birds and the dragonflies with the right tools to be able to get to the particular food sources and habitats that they need to survive. Evolution cannot explain how dragonflies pick such a long and tiring migration for their own survival. The truths in the Bible point us back to God's purposeful design and his provision. And while God cares for the creatures of the earth, he also promises us that he will provide for us as well. He has designed mankind to be special. We are made in his image, and as such, we were designed to be in a relationship with him. God will surely provide for all of our needs, just like he does for the glow skimmer dragonfly and for the birds, because we are more precious in his sight than they. That was beautifully put, Keeling, and it really is one more reason to remind ourselves that creation is cool, but our creator is even cooler. We'll see you next time! Check out our original lessons by Andy Shi on our website, which is linked below. Also check out our other Creation is Cool videos here.